Adrian Ann Breitfelder, City Clerk, you are hereby directed to call a special session of the City Council to be held on Monday, October 7th, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. in the historic Federal Building for the purpose of conducting a work session on the Smart Parking Mobility Management Plan. Good evening and welcome to a special session of the Dubuque City Council for October 7th, 2024. As a reminder to viewers and listeners, due to the nature of tonight's meeting topic, public input is not accepted. However, you may contact the City Council directly from the City's webpage at www.cityofdubuque.org slash council contacts. Attendance for the session is as follows. Mayor Cavanaugh. Here. Council members Farber. Here. Jones. Here. Resnick. Here. Roussel. Here. Sprank. Here. Wethel. Here. City Manager Van Milligan. Here. And City Attorney Brumwell. Here. Thank you. Our work session topic is the Smart Park and Mobility Management Plan. I will turn it over to Director of Transportation Services, Ryan Nucky. Good evening. Ryan Nucky, Director of Transportation Services. Uh, thank you very much for having us tonight to walk through the Smart Park and Mobility Management Plan. Uh, a little bit of history on this. We came to City Council about a year and a half to two years ago to write an RFP to get a consultant to come to the City of Dubuque to do a study of our downtown and, and how the parking works with the parking ramps, the on-street meters, and the, also the parking lots. Uh, we were very fortunate. We hired Walker Consulting, um, Kevin White, who's standing behind me. They came to the city and we did a very robust study that included not only just gathering data and occupancy level and ramps, uh, we also did a study with uh, a lot of public engagement, including some nights down at the Millwork District, um, along with uh, engaging the businesses throughout the downtown also. With this, we've come back to the City Council and we were approved to do an RFP for our parking ramps, which we are currently in discussion with a vendor for that, that contract. And now we're coming back to the City Council with our Smart Park M Management Plan. Um, this is just a plan. It's not being adopted tonight. We are just discussing it with City Council, um, and we're looking for any input on it. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin White with Walker Consulting. Well, thanks, everybody, for having us tonight. Um, this meeting is... Sure. Oh, wow. So we're going to talk more about the ongoing work of the parking division in the last year since we were here before you and really what lies ahead as we wrap up the smart parking management plan. And the hope is to, at a future council meeting, get this approved and get it in the hands of the parking division to really move forward and carry some of these things into the future. Uh, so from an agenda standpoint, I want to provide a few brief reminders about the plan project, how we got to this point. We're going to discuss our smart parking plan deliverable. We're going to offer a sort of state of the union on where the parking system's at and what's been accomplished since we were here last fall. And then we're, we're going to discuss what's uh, recommended for the path ahead. So a reminder about the plan project. Uh, this plan project began in the late summer of 2022. As Ryan mentioned, we did data collection early on. We had robust online and in-person engagement. We were here before you in January 2023. We were presenting phase one findings. Uh, and then we were again in front of you in the fall of last year talking about some of the recommended options for moving forward. So we're here at the end of phase three. We're finalizing the plan. We're finalizing that work plan for the division to be able to move forward into the future. And as I said, the hope is to have this uh, formally approved by the council at a later date. We do invite your, your feedback and questions tonight. And, after this evening. So as you may recall, a reminder about what we talked about last time, uh, we were talking about our ideas for the overhaul of the on and off street parking system here in Dubuque. We discussed equipment upgrades, branding and communications, policies and operations, and really that financial outlook for the future. Um, and as I said, we're gonna give you an update on what's been accomplished over the last year. And then we're gonna talk about what we are looking to do as we move forward through the lens of the smart parking plan. But I wanted to remind us about the recommended uh, approach or theory of operation for the different facets of the parking system as we think about transforming the parking system. Um, this theory of operation, which we'll talk about in a second, is really foundational to how we think about technology and operations and customer service. So I wanted to spend a minute on that. Um, so for on-street parking, the, at this point, the recommended theory of operation is to actually remove the single space meters across the city. We want to downsize the physical hardware that needs to be maintained by the division. The idea is to put multi-space pay station kiosks in the city uh, placed about one per block face. So these would accept payment uh, via credit card and coin. 
Uh, the user would park, they'd walk to a pay station, they'd enter their license plate at the pay station, uh, and then the license plate is going to serve as their credential for parking. Uh, we would also offer mobile payment with QR code and text to pay. We'll talk a little bit more about the update on where we're at with the mobile app here in a minute. Um, what we're planning to do at this point is to actually keep the single space meter uh, posts, which you'll see some examples here from the city of Omaha. Um, the idea here is that we're going to actually take the, the proposals to take the top off of those meters and actually leave the posts in the ground and actually affix stickers to the post to direct uh, users to pay either on the app or at the pay station. So it's just a way of denoting to the users where they should park and uh, really helping with that learning curve as we hopefully transition away from the single space meters, which really is the uh, trend we're seeing in a lot of cities, including the city of Des Moines. These areas are going to be uh, enforced with a, what's called the mobile license plate recognition system. So it's really going to streamline operations for the city and we're, we're really looking for ways to create efficiencies. Um, in the surface lot, so this would be handled the same way as the on-street parking. The user would park in the lot, they'd walk to the pay station or they'd go onto the mobile app, they'd enter their license plate uh, into the app or the pay station and they would park. Um, if you're a permitted parker in one of these lots, you would actually have your license plate on file uh, as part of a digital uh, permit system with the city and the city would then be able to enforce the lots with a mobile license plate recognition camera, which is something that we would affix to an actual city fleet vehicle um, in the same way that they would be enforcing the on-street. So this surface lot environment, it essentially acts exactly like the on-street environment. Uh, for the ramps, what we're proposing is really just a modernized version of what you have today. Uh, this is called Parking Access and Revenue Control System, or PARCS. Um, this is, uh, includes fixed license plate recognition cameras, so that picture at bottom left, you can see those fixed cameras. These let contract parkers and paid hourly parkers through the gates seamlessly without having to pull out a prox card or a ticket. Um, and we'll talk more about this here in a second, but it includes credit card only exit stations. It includes uh, pay on foot machines that actually accept cash if folks want to use cash. Um, and then it also has some interesting options around prepaid and event parking, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But those are the sort of three basic uh, approaches, if you will, or really two basic approaches for how we're going to conduct uh, operations and management of parking moving forward. So this is kind of a conceptual diagram that's <coughs> meant to show you uh, on the right, uh, the ramps kind of exist on their own. This is a gated parking access and revenue control system. The city's actually, as Ryan mentioned, we've selected a vendor uh, for this system. We'll talk a little bit more about the timeline, the new technology, and some of the specifics here in a minute. The vendor is called Amano McGann. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, on the left, as I mentioned, the on-street and, and surface lot environment this is really operating with the same suite of technology. And so the hope is, as we get into the end of this year, into the early part of next year, we're going to release an additional RFP to actually procure equipment to be able to power uh, and operate this part of the system. I do want to mention that as we release the RFP, I think it's important to you know, make sure that we welcome alternate approaches. Uh, we'll put language in the RFP that um, denotes that folks can come to us with alternate approaches uh, if they so choose. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility. So that conceptually is how we're thinking about parking here moving forward. Are there any questions on that? We'll get into some more specifics about the chosen vendor uh, and what we're recommending specifically on the plan here in a minute. We find it's most efficient to write our questions down and come back to them. Perfect. If that works for you, then we can That's just kind of keep the perfect. presentation flowing. Thank you, though. Thank you. So regarding the plan, so this is really a culmination of over two years worth of work that we've done with the city, uh, with city staff, with you as the council, with stakeholders. It's essentially the guiding framework. It's the work plan for the parking division to make decisions, really work with the council and with stakeholders and begin to enact changes. So we're talking about technology changes. Uh, we're talking about customer service changes, really trying to make the system more efficient, resilient, financially stable is really important and better serving customers moving forward. And, and a big word that we want to emphasize is efficiency. So that's something that 
we really, really want to strive for moving forward. And so the document, you have a copy of at least the implementation plan portion of it. It's got guiding principles. It's got core values that we agreed to as, as a group. It has strategic goals and specific action steps. This specific work plan that you see here is really the detailed, um, essentially, action plan for the division here over, let's say, the next handful of years. And so it's going to be a roadmap for this group moving forward. And again, we welcome feedback on all of this. Um, essentially, the document and, and how we think about parking is divided into four separate categories. And so we have this category uh, at the top left, which is all about organization and stewardship and finances and stakeholder engagement. Um, at the top right, we have this category of policies and parking operations and management strategies. Uh, at the bottom left, we have equipment and technology. So the equipment and technology that really power the system, and then not to lose sight of the one at the bottom right. This is the category of communications and wayfinding. This is really, really critical as we think about parking operations and customer service. And so this is how we've broken out our, our strategies, and this is how we'll talk about the parking system and share with you an update of the parking system here tonight. So wanted to jump and invite Ryan up. We're going to go through each of those categories that I talked about. We're going to let Ryan give you an update on some of the things that are ongoing, some of the work that's actually been accomplished over the last year. There's been some really cool things that have actually been enacted as we've been working on this plan, which is really exciting. Um, and then, so Ryan will give an update on where things stand with each of these kind of buckets, and then I'll talk about what lies ahead uh, under each of those. So Ryan, please. I'm gonna lower it, kind of. Sure. Okay, is that okay? Just a little bit. <laughs> Ryan Nucky, Director of Transportation Services. Like Kevin said, we're doing a lot of work, but we also need to do a lot of physical works to our ramps. So over the past three years, we've done a ramp assessment. So it's really a preventative maintenance uh, program that we're gonna put in for the ramps. And we're actually using that right now. I'm actually sitting down with engineering to go through all of these assessments tomorrow to build CIPs for the budget season. But one thing we did was last year, we had these ramp assessments and with that, the engineering department was able to outline, especially an Iowa Street ramp, what we need to do to fix that ramp to make it back up, up to par where we want it. And with that, we're able to create the CIPs to move forward so that these ramps are in better shape for the public to use. As far as staff and hiring and training, with the RFPs that we've been sending out, um, we've been sending our staff along with it. We've been making sure we're going and looking at this equipment across the board. So before we even sent out that RFP for the, the ramp technology, we already went out and looked at the different type of technology around um, the Iowa area, we'll put it that way. And what we found was a lot of this technology is a plug and play technology. As in, you take the outside panel off, it's four screws, you unplug the USB cord and you plug in the new part and put your four screws back. Very easy to handle, very easy to work with. And we found that with a lot of different vendors. And then that's why when we put the RFP out, we felt very confident that when we actually sat down and looked at them, we're like, I understand what that is. We know what this is ready. And then as we move forward, we did um, Teams calls with a lot of these vendors and not only the vendors, but um, people that ran the equipment. And with talking to them, the amount of data that they can collect now, they can tell you at 9.35 in the morning who's in the ramp and how long they've been in the ramp and where they work, and it's amazing the data I'll be able to collect with this um, information. The big thing on that is just our staff has seen this technology, and they're, they're excited to move forward with it. They're excited to be able to actually bring in real life data so that we can actually analyze the ramps and, and the better ways to use the ramps and the on streets. Um, as far as downtown business engagement, as we went through this plan, uh, Walker, um, and RDG, they also would add public input. We've been reaching out to different businesses to see their input on some of the changes that we've already started in the ramps. And as we get further into this, I'll discuss that a little further. I wanted to commend as well the role of the information technology department on this process. I think uh, Chris Coleman and others were really helpful on that RFP process, and so we really appreciate that. Um, what's to come, really, in this category? Uh, we're recommending the development of an organization mission statement, you know, continued staffing and de uh, development and training, 
Um, and the regular use of data to drive operations decisions, long-term budgeting, and strategic planning. So this is a really big theme. Um, the current system really doesn't yield any usable data to be able to uh, inform how we make decisions, how we do budgeting, how we manage the facilities on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it's really going to be important that the city leverage all of the data that is being provided by these new systems you know, adopt a, a process where data is collected, where data is shared with constituents as part of a regular reporting and transparency process, and then using that data to make decisions moving forward, I think is going to be really, really critical. And that's really what we've stressed here in the plan over the coming years, is continue to look at data, continue to adjust, uh, and figure out how best to manage the system to be as efficient as possible. So jumping to this category of policy, parking operations, and management. So this is really about rates and regulations. It's about how we're handling contract parkers and daily and hourly parkers. It's about how we're uh, collecting payment, how we're conducting enforcement, how we're doing customer service. And um, there's actually been some interesting changes already. Some of these rates have been updated. Ryan will give a quick update on where this stands. The nice part with this plan is we've already started some of this. I came to you guys during budget season and asked you guys if it would be okay if we increased some of our ramp costs. And when we did that, we didn't increase all ramp costs because that wasn't needed on our side. We looked at the ramps with the highest occupancy levels, with the highest waiting lists, and we looked at those ramps and said, these are ramps that people would be willing to pay more to be in. And the other ramps we let at a flat rate where they are today, then that way the occupancy level will grow on those. Not only did we this, do this in the ramps, but we also looked at our, our, our lots around the city. And this list does not encompass all of our parking lots that we use throughout the Dubuque, but we looked at certain lots and we said these lots are prime lots across the city, and these lots are, are the desired ones for people to get into. And when I came to you guys during budget season, we looked at the pros and cons, and we decided to move forward with that. Not only did we look at the ramps, we looked at our on-street violations that we were seeing. And with that, and I'm going to pick on the meter violations, the previous rate was $10. To park full-time downtown Dubuque all day long was $10. So I know a lot of people when they come in, they'd say, hey, I was okay taking a ticket because it's the same cost for me to park downtown all day. Well, now we're seeing less of that and people are actually looking at it saying, oh, I'm going to get a, a violation or a fine if I don't pay the meter as we move forward. So we've started this process already and we're already rolling it into our budgets and definitely looking at our CIPs for next year. So looking ahead, I think adoption of criteria and a process for making continuous rate changes is really going to be critical, right? So we had a period uh, before we entered the scene here and worked on this plan where rates were pretty stagnant. I think it's going to be important moving forward that the division work with council to figure out a way to, and we've articulated this in the plan, to be able to make rate changes based on data and based on the market. And you know, formalizing rate changes and changes in the approach for enforcement is going to be really critical. Um, a couple other interesting things I think is, are worth noting, you know, incentivizing greater use of the ramps downtown uh, through things like event parking, through things like uh, overnight permits for residents, the new technology is going to be, is going to allow us to frankly offer some options for parking that don't currently exist. And so it's really important that we leverage those options to drive revenue, to drive efficiency of those facilities. Uh, another item is repurposing and selling underutilized parking lots. And so this is something that really jumped out at us when we did our data collection, when we looked at the revenue around parking lots. Um, there are more parking lots in the city than many comparable cities. Um, I think, generally speaking, they're not really contributing much to the uh, bottom line. So looking for ways to repurpose lots, to sell lots, to consolidate parkers into fewer lots, leveraging lots for redevelopment, adding density, enlivening downtown, I think that is something that really jumped out at us. Um, looking for ways to manage new demands on the curb, uh, like loading and other ways that people want to use curb space, and then making ordinance changes that really are going to support some of these items in the plan. There are items in this plan that will require some ordinance modifications, and we've talked about that uh, in our document as well. 
Um, looking ahead, the work is really going to be focusing on making necessary rate policy and, and operational changes. I think, you know, in regards to rates, you know, we want to encourage the division to work with council to uh, develop and adopt the authority to make necessary rate changes moving forward. So give the division, uh, working with the city manager, the ability and the authority to make rate changes based on a pre-established uh, criteria. So for on-street parking, we're recommending a process where data is collected once per year and rates are actually reset annually based on data, based on demand data in 25 cent increments um, within an approved range. So we have articulated kind of a framework for what this would look like in the plan. And the idea here is the division would uh, need to detail this process and then get this approved by the council at a later date to give them that authority. So that's, that's for on-street parking. For off-street parking, we're really encouraging um, three-year uh, rate schedules for the lots and the ramps and have those rate schedules uh, be revisited every three years as part of a formal rate study that really takes into account the use of facilities, um, operating revenues and expenses, ongoing capital expenditures. This is pretty typical in some other cities we've worked on. Giving yourselves the ability to make uh, ongoing rate changes that respond to demand and the market you know, quantitative things that cannot be uh, argued that are based in reality and science. Uh, we want to make sure that that is what we root our, our parking rate changes in uh, in the future. Um, in terms of the next category, this is arguably the most exciting transformation because there's some really cool stuff happening already and we have some great stuff to share with you tonight. This is about procuring and operating equipment, right, technology that um, really powers the parking system, we, collecting payment, uh, you know, conducting permitting and credentialing, access control and enforcement. So we're going through a process uh, of actually transforming this physical technology right now. And Brian, I'll give you a quick update on this. As I mentioned before, we've already started contract negotiations with Amano McGann. Uh, I, another shout out to Chris Coleman and the IS team. They are doing a great job at, in getting all the little details that you know myself and Kevin might be missing. So I want I really appreciate what Chris and her department are doing for us there. But Amano McGann is the future for our parking ramps as of today. And we're looking at how we can utilize that. So we've already sent our team to look at different setups that have Amano McGann in them. Um, we've done conference calls with them to see what the reporting looks like. We're very excited with where that will take us. As far as Kevin saying, coming back to council with data, this will give us that data. We'll be able to tell you every day of the week how many cars are in there, what times they're in there. We'll be able to break it down um, to show you the occupancy levels of these ramps. When we look at the on-street and the surface lot management, we're very excited for this RFP coming up. We're about 80, 85% complete with this. Hopefully we're bringing this uh, to council in about a month or two. And, and with this RFP, it's going, to trans, it's going to transform how people park downtown. Um, we won't have meters eating coins anymore. We won't have issues with um, people upset that the meter was still flashing, but I put a quarter in. So we're going to have the multiple ways to pay, and with the different systems that we're going to have, it will send us alerts if something's wrong with these meters. Today, the only way that we know if a meter's down is if either the public reaches are out or if we by chance see that meter. The other thing is we, we're going to look at implementing mobile license plate recognition. Um, this will greatly help out our workforce for the city as far as being able to go through the city in a much faster pace, a much uh, more recognizable pace um, to make sure that people are utilizing the system in an honest way. And Number three, mobile app replacement. We're very excited to look at uh, some other vendors that are out there. And we want to look at other vendors that are around the, you know, the, the region of Dubuque. Because we don't want people to have 10 different apps on their phone. We're trying to figure out what's a, a nice common app that people can use around this area that is both user friendly for the, um, the public, but also implements into all of our systems. And that is something that we've worked in the RFPs. All right, so we talked about this a little bit earlier. So the city is actually, this is really exciting. We're moving forward with negotiating a contract with chosen vendor Amano again. So this is the gated parks equipment in the ramps. Um, Amano has their equipment installed in Iowa City. They're in facilities across the US. They are a, a pretty longstanding um, legacy parking vendor. The plan is to have equipment tested and go live as we get 
to the end of the first quarter into the second quarter of 2025, the city is going to receive Amano's new Amano One equipment line. Uh, so this is a new line as of a few years ago. Um, and I'll just kind of go through some of the features. I know there have been some questions about this. Um, you can see the entry exit stations at the left. So those will be at all entry and exit lanes. Uh, these are the same exact devices, whether you're at the entry lane or the exit lane. Same thing. Um, they're going to have a large color screen displaying instructions. They're going to have a prox card reader for permitted parkers. They'll have a, it'll have a ticket scanner, a receipt dispenser, and then a credit card uh, module that accepts tap to pay and insert to pay. Um, what's interesting is the devices allow for event mode. So the operator, in this case the city, can switch on event mode if they so choose in advance of event an event. So what that, hap what that does is it requires either advance reservation or pay on entry, right? Uh, so that after the event, the operator can then just raise the gates and folks can just drive out because they've already paid. So it's a way to speed up exiting after an event. So this would be a, a very conscious decision that the city can make in certain instances if they so choose. So it allows for that free flow exiting. Uh, the system's gonna have integrated mobile payment um, through the Amano One app that the user can then scan uh, the ticket that will be spit out at the entry gate and they can pay um, on the uh, mobile app if they so choose. Um, the, we are also installing, as I mentioned, walk up pay on foot machines in select locations um, and those will actually accept paper uh, cash currency as well as credit cards because the idea is that at the exit lane and at the entry lane, it's credit card only. So if you want to use cash, um, you have to go to one of these pay on foot machines. And so that's really where the industry is moving. It's really a, a way to streamline uh, queues and exits uh, for folks in garages. A couple other features of note that are really cool. The system's going to have built-in live support. So a customer is going to be able to call in from either an entry or exit station um, to a live call center. And in this case, it'll go to the city uh, during staffed hours. The city, as the operator, is going to be able to see everything that the user sees on the screen. They'll be able to troubleshoot with the user. So that's a really cool feature that is built into the system. Uh, the system is going to have fixed LPR cameras. So what's cool there is if your license plate's on file, if you're a permitted parker, you're going to drive up and without even pulling out your prox card, the gate's going to go up on the entry. It's going to go up on the exit because it knows you're on file. Um, also for uh, paid transient parkers. So if I go into the garage, if I park, let's say I pull out that app and I pay, it'll say, please enter your license plate. So I'll type in ABC123. I'll pay for parking. And then on the way out, it'll know that I've paid and the gate will go up. So that's a really cool feature. It's going to really speed up entries and exits. Um, what's cool, Ryan talked about the data. Uh, it's going to have robust data and reporting. There's a bunch of different reports that the system can generate. Um, they'll even customize reports um, to your uh, liking. And we've gone through these with parking division staff to make sure that these are going to meet the needs of reporting and keeping track of performance metrics. And so this is going to help with all sorts of initiatives like figuring out you know, how do we calibrate permit sales in the garages or how do we promote customer service or can we open up a certain facility for event parking, that kind of thing. So lots of cool features that are really going to help the customer and help the parking division. So moving ahead, we're really focused on getting this, these gated um, parks equipment uh, live. So as I said, as we get into the, uh, at the end of, of say April of 2025 is when we expect to go live, there's going to be a acceptance testing period as well, where the Walker team is going to be vigorously testing all the equipment, trying to make the equipment fail, so to speak, to make sure that it's going to not have any bugs in it. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, the RFP for the rest of the system uh, is going to follow shortly thereafter. And as Ryan mentioned as well, we're working to update the mobile application uh, because we are aware of some issues with the mobile app. So we're looking at that process as well. Um, and so as we get into next year, right, the hope is to have that gated parks equipment go live by Q2 of 2025 and then the rest of the system really by Q2 or Q3 of 2025, you know, say by summer of next year is when we hope to be 
complete with the full-scale uh, equipment transformation. So the last item, there's some exciting things to share here as well, and this is all about creating brand recognition. It's about communicating and marketing parking and the rules and regulations, making sure people know that this is a parking facility that the city of Dubuque operates, that they can park there, making sure they understand what the rules and regulations are, um, and then really communicating uh, as we transform technology, as we teach people how to use technology, communications is gonna be really important. So there has been some work already done in this area, and I think it's really exciting to see some of this live, and so I'll let Ryan give a, an update here. So like Kevin noted, we've started already. We've started some of this already. We've worked with Kristen Hill and Randy Gale, and we said we need to get going. And what we looked at is different logos that we could have for the city, different type of branding that we could move forward with. And Kristen Hill and Randy and his, their team did a great job with the EV charger down in the Port of Dubuque. We put a wrap on it. We've gotten some really good feedback on it. We like the color and we like how it looks. Um, we've had some graffiti on it already. We were able to get it off and take care of that. But we were very impressed with how this, this already is starting to look. And as we move forward with this, we're working in the Locust Street ramp right now. And I don't know if you guys have gone through Locust Street right now. We're giving the stairways a, a, a much needed facelift, we'll put it that way. And Corey probably has about 50 emails in her box from me saying, is this color okay? Is it too bright? Is it not bright enough? Um, we wanted to make sure that we brightened it up because we want people coming through the ramps to be happy, to be smiling, to enjoy the experience. Um, the past color was kind of dull and kind of like a cloudy day. So we're trying to really brighten it up. And right here is just what the, first, the ground level is gonna look like. Um, it's gonna be a very pretty blue color in my mind. And then what we'll do is we'll have very clear signage there. And along with that, when we get the gate equipment into these ramps, it will have the how to use this gate equipment right next to it. So it'll be very easy for people to pick out and take a look at. Um, what we are not trying to do is we're not trying to um, change the look of the downtown. So I, I had very clear direction that we want to keep the downtown still looking historic in certain areas. So you'll see on different levels of these ramps, certain areas will be painted, but certain very visible areas from the outside will not be painted. So we had the first stairwell done at Locust Street. We're very excited about how it's looking and turning out. Um, the facelift is a very nice thing to see, and we're working on getting this completed. We're, the goal is to have everything done by November 1st, and we're done and out of that ramp. But we're not just stopping with that ramp. We're gonna keep continuing on with our other ramps because they just need a facelift. We need people to be, feel safe in these ramps. One thing that we're doing in this ramp is we already had the cameras in the stairwells, but we believe that there wasn't enough lighting on the outside of the, of the stairwells. So we're adding certain lighting in certain locations so people feel a bit more safer in this ramp. And, and that's the overall goal, and that's where I've, I've reached out to some businesses that have a, a lot of personnel in these ramps and just ask for their input on it. What can I do to make your um, employees feel more safe in these ramps? And so far, we've taken what we've received and we're implementing and putting it in it as we move forward. So we're very excited to see what we can do as we move forward with that. And we're not just stopping on the insides, and I'll give it back to Kevin in a second, but we're gonna be looking at all the signage we have currently because not only do we have different signs on almost every ramp? Nothing is the same, and for people to understand, hey, this is a city garage, they can't see that at the current time. So we're gonna be looking at our other ramps and our other signage, and we're gonna be rebranding it so that people will understand that, oh, this, is the, this has the blue P on it, we can definitely be pulling into the ramp to utilize this ramp as we move forward. So we're very excited with that. I'll let you sure. chime in. So, as you could tell, Park DBQ is the new brand. Um, these are some concepts here. You can see the new website being conceptualized, what that looks like. You can see some renderings of new signage on the outside of the garage as well as inside, and then what it would look like maybe on the side of a pay station as well, you know, clearly communicating how to pay, what the rules and regulations are. And so, this transformation, really, we, we want to see this here over the next six months to a year or so as we get into the second and third quarter of next year. And as I said, it's a goal is to communicate changes. It's to create brand recognition, trust, uniformity uh, for parking users, and really create a coherent signage approach for the city. 
so we're recommending the continued rollout of this Park DBQ brand, continued communication, the appropriate signage upgrades. Um, as Ryan said, aesthetic improvements in the ramps, I think, are really critical. People are reluctant to park in parking garages in the Midwest for whatever reason. So bright lighting, uh, paint goes a long way to really uh, make people feel safe and comfortable. And the hope, as Ryan uh, alluded to, is to have this rebrand complete uh, in the ramps as we get into the third quarter of next year uh, with the on-street parking transformation as well. Uh, and that's really it. I mean, to close, this is gonna be a multi-year process, right? We're really focused on getting the new equipment in, getting that uh, you know, in and functional, um, completing the system rebrand. I think that's really, really important. Um, making those necessary policy and, and operations changes and then continuing to collect data, monitor the system, how is it being used, how are people's behaviors impacted, and then kind of adjusting and tweaking as we go as needed. So uh, with that, uh, again, the hope is to have this plan uh, approved here as we finish up the year, and we certainly welcome any questions and discussion. We appreciate your time. Right. Great. Thank well, you. thank you very much, Kevin yeah. and Ryan. This is... Uh, I'll start by saying I'm liking everything I'm seeing. I, I really, I don't feel surprised at all. This is something you've kind of laid out for us already and you started talking about this uh, a while ago. We've just get it, gotten it in bits and pieces and I really appreciate what we're looking at here. This is starting to really come together and exciting to hear that we're looking at next year already. So, or at least for some of these pieces to be done next year is what you're saying, yes. Yeah, um, Mr. Sprank, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Really appreciative of all the work. I'm really glad that the kiosks were able to take cash. I had a number of seniors reach out to me mm, who yep. basically they want to be able to pay in cash or coins. So very happy with that. Um, but question, since everything is going to credit cards and credit card readers and there's credit card reading fees, how bad is it going to be on that? Like how bad, because every time I use the app, I have to pay an extra 25 cents, which I don't care, but because it's a convenience factor, how bad will that be with the new system? Any idea? Yeah, I, no change. Well, so the um, the jury, I think, is still out a little bit on the mobile app transaction okay. fee, depending on the chosen vendor. But typically, those are no more than like thirty five cents per transaction, and the user um, has to acknowledge that they're willing to accept that fee before submitting payment. But for the rest of the system, there won't be any changes to the fees. There won't be any additional fees incurred to the user. And then how long, one last, how long will we keep the data of like your card, re the, the license plate reading? When the car's going down the street, when the, that's basically reading everybody's <coughs> license plate. How long do we hold on to that information? Yeah, I think that's going to be something. I know that the IT staff, um, we discussed that, I think, with the vendors. Um, typically, there's protocols for holding it and then expunging it. Um, everything is PCI compliant, so there's very strict standards from a security standpoint uh, with credit card. Um, and then, of course, you know some states have rules and regulations around license plates, and so obviously we'll have to work with the city attorney's office to make sure that we're you know, following the right data policies. But um, this is a fairly typical application, um, but I think there's going to be a process where we're going to have it for some period of time, and then it gets expunged. From the we'll, record. We'll work with credits too. Thank you. And I should say that users don't necessarily have to share their license plate. Um, like if I'm a contract permitted parkers, parker, so let's say I have a contract to park in the Iowa Street ramp, it'll be an optional thing where if they want to put their plate on file to enable the free flow entry exit, they can. Uh, they can also choose to not do that. Just one question as it relates to our job as a city council and changing ordinances and C7 there. It's almost as if uh, what you have put down is that we need to adapt the code more than change the code. Is that correct? I mean, it doesn't look like there's anything that stood out to me as um, we got to get on this. I think that's fair. Um, as we move forward, um, one of the things we talked about is potentially modifying exactly where we have on-street paid parking and what the rules and regulations are as far as like time limits and rates. I believe as those decisions are made, 
there will need to be specific changes to some of the ordinances because there's pretty detailed um, notes in the code about specifically where different types of on-street parking is. Um, but to your point, I agree that the biggest thing is the rate changes. I think that um, I don't think there's going to need to be uh, a massive change there. We already have um, the authority for staff to work with the city manager to make rate changes. I think what we're saying is that we'd like the parking division to come up with a prescription, a framework for, hey, this is how we're going to make on-street rate changes. We're not going to wait every five years to change rates. We're going to have a process where every year we're going to look at data and we're going to make changes working with the city manager based on a process that we've worked out with you that you essentially would grant the parking division the authority to do that following the, the rubric that has been set. So the goal would be that in those areas where we're consistently seeing 85, 90, 100% parking demand, we need to try to raise those rates, right? Because it's all about uh, supply and demand. It's about trying to get the turnover on street. So the notion is, is let's say in the millwork district, let's say we're consistently seeing high parking demand, the division would then have the ability to raise the rate uh, by 25 cents, which is what our recommendation is, to see how the market reacts to that, right, without having to um, come back to council every time. So I think I agree with your premise. It's just a matter of the division kind of articulating how rates are going to change, both on street and off street, getting that adopted with you all, uh, and then moving forward. Go ahead. Can I, can I just ask one other thing as it relates to that, I think, uh, to clear it in my own head. So we're talking about every few years re-examining the data and then creating the rate change. So we're not proposing necessarily when we create these changes in ordinances, there's an automatic rate increase after three no, years of no, this no, no. amount. Nope. And I appreciate that. I'd, I really look forward to doing that in real time as we go. So thank you for... Going that far. Yeah, I mean, there's very real possibility that many on-street areas would actually, based on the rubric that we've recommended, see rate reductions, right? It, it makes no sense to have an area be at a certain rate if no one's parking there. So the notion is let's reduce the rate. So we're trying to give these guys the authority to make rate changes in the future based on data, based on the market, based on things that you can't really argue about. Um, some cities will just pick rates and they'll just say, we're going to do this and we're going to charge this because they're trying to find sources of revenue. And we've found that that always leads to a dangerous path. Like you need to root your rate changes in data because you can't argue with facts, right? If we're saying, well, we're going to raise rates to $3 an hour on street because we need more money to pay for X, Y, and Z, that's not going to go off very well with the public. I do want to reference back to your first question about the ordinances. Since we do have our ramp technology vendor selected and we're working through the contract section of that, once we get a confirmed contract with which we're working with Crenna's team already, then we're going to go through the ordinances and review everything for the ramps. And any of those ordinances we need to modify, we'll be working with Crenna and her team on to get those updated prior to the go live date of the ramps. Once we have the RFP for the on street and the lots, out and we bring a vendor back and we select a vendor, again, we'll be sitting down with Krenna's team and saying, hey, here's the new vendor, here's the technology, whether it be um, street meters or on-street pay stations, we need to figure out what that technology is before we go in and start switching words in our ordinances. So we have a little bit of time. Um, I've already informed Krenna and Barry that, hey, it's coming, it's just we need to get a couple things in row first. I would say just something to add, um, as we were reviewing the ordinances, there's a lot of reference to like parking meter. So it depends on like what's your definition of a parking meter, right? We're talking about a kiosk and a mobile app. So we have made notes in the plan about specific sections that need to be revisited. We are not legal scholars, but I would just encourage the city to make sure to Ryan's point that any technology that's being pursued, that the way that the code is, is articulated it accommodates that technology. Mr. Um, Mr. Resnick. All right, thank you. First, then so uh, our policy is going to remain, though, of course, that the system is to pay for itself, right? You mentioned not profiting or, or on parking, right? The system is meant to pay for itself. Therefore, 
you, you, your, your, your talk of responding to demand and, and getting more money for high demand spots, it just seems like uh, what, what is our philosophy? Does it, does it stay as, a, uh, as we have it now? So I would say that at the moment, we are not paying for ourselves, right? We, we remember that from the last time that there is a general fund subsidy into the parking division. The goal absolutely is to have the system pay for itself. Um, one of the things that I think moving forward is when we get these, this new equipment in, it's gonna give us the ability to start opening up these ramps in ways that we haven't seen before. Anybody who says there's no parking downtown, we need to dispel that notion. These, these garages have space. They should be humming at 70, 80% occupancy 24 seven, right? Like there are ways to, using this technology, open up these garages to downtown residents to park overnight. So anybody who says, man, I wanna build a new building in downtown, but I need parking for my residents, we can look at setting that up now that we have this new technology. Event parking, right? We talk about Chaplin Schmidt Island, all this stuff going on there. Are there ways to open the facilities up for event parking? Hotel parking, there's ways to leverage the new technology to accommodate hotel parking. So my point is, is that we're trying to generate new revenue streams that don't currently exist. Um, and hopefully that that puts us on a path to um, financial sustainability. I would say just the sheer number of assets is immense. I think the number of surface lot stalls is pretty immense. Um, I like to see opportunities be taken advantage of to shed some of those over time. Uh, I think that with this new technology, um, we can reduce the number of lots we have and frankly cut some of those costs. And so I think it's a combination of new revenue streams and then becoming more efficient, cutting some expenses uh, along the way. Frankly, you have a lot of assets, they're expensive. We just need more demand. We need more density, we need more hotels, we need more events. The new technology is gonna give us the opportunity to open it up for all those folks. I appreciate your thoughts there uh, because we want to have a thriving downtown. Yes. And I remember people saying, I'm not going downtown. There's free parking out at the mall. And, um, you know, that worked for a while. Then we have a fabulous downtown. People want to come. And I don't want to. Uh, so it really has to be a balancing uh, game. And you mentioned that the new kiosk will be uh, accept paper money. Does that mean coins too? So... You're talking at the garages or, or? Well, I mean, Mr. Sprank talked about that they wanted to use coins. Are they going to be able to so use coins? So just to clarify, so on street, we'll accept coin, no okay. bill. Okay. In the garages is the opposite. It's kind of funny that it's that way, but on street technology is typically coin, credit card, mobile app. In the garages, it's paper, credit card, mobile app. Well, our parking system obviously needs a lot of work, and I appreciate all your help. And you, your presentation talked about how it would be better for the city in many ways. And I was just really emphasized how it's better for our citizens. And you did talk about convenience, which is great. Uh, but this transition, um, is this going to be easier for the users eventually? Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be cost effective for them? because I want that thriving downtown and I want all our citizens to feel welcome downtown. Mm -hmm. um, so th there's a lot going on here. I appreciate that. Um, a citizen-centric presentation is really important to me, but I appreciate you telling us what it is and updating it as far as city operations, which we are concerned with as a council. But of course, we're citizen representatives, right? So we're all thinking, how are our citizens gonna deal with this? And I'm sure you're putting a lot of t a thought of that. Yeah, I mean, just the, the fact that we're going to have things like the LPR technology, really seamless entry exits, the different ways to pay, you know, frankly, a system that works is going to be a big change. Um, but, you know, we need to get this system up to modern standards. And as I said, we need to look for ways to just bring life downtown and, and start filling garages. And the new technology is really going to give you that, that opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Ms. Farber. Yes, thank you. And thank you for the presentation. And I applaud the theme of the efficiency as well as the streamlining the flow of the car movement. Um, and also what I enjoyed hearing was about the regular 
uh, advanced payments versus the event mode. So there's flexibility in usage, um, presuming that we can rebrand and market uh, with your enthusiasm and energy, which I think will be done. Um, but just I wanted to um, ask just a question about the license plate readers. And um, when we go into Chicago and we use our cards for the license plate readers, it zooms past and it gets charged to our credit card. And I don't think we change the license plate information unless we change our subscription. In other words, if we change a car or if we decide to not use the, um, the FOB anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that would be similar so that it would be an easy um, comparable for, for the residents to understand what this new technology might look like? Are you talking about for like tolling? Like the toll booth. Oh, and sure, you have a sure. FOB, you have a little... So, reader, you have a, a reader that goes to your credit card based yeah. on your yeah. information that's in there, but it ties into your, obviously. Yeah, so let's say Jane Doe works downtown and she has a contract to park in the <coughs> Iowa Street ramp. She will go to the city. The city will issue her a proximity card mm -hmm. and they will say, would you like to put your license plate on file with the city? And she will say, yeah, I have two cars. Sometimes I drive my partner's car. So it's ABC 123 and ABC 124. Those will go on file with the city. Mm -hmm. And she will literally drive up and the LPR cam will read her plate and the gate will go up. If she drives her partner's car, same thing. And the garage will actually know, like let's say she tries to go in with her car and then her partner tries to, it's going to know there's mm -hmm. only one car that's supposed to be in with this contract. And if she buys a new car, gets a new plate, she can change that with the city. So they'll actually be, um, the way Amano will set it up, I think they'll be like a customer facing mm -hmm. portal that they'll be able to log in and yeah. see all their information. Right, so it's just important to know that that's very similar to that kind of operation that currently exists today yeah. and is very safe and secure from a public yeah. safety perspective. So I think that's kind of a nice yeah. efficient um, way for us to move forward. One thing that's really cool too is like I talked about advanced reservation. So Spot Hero, some of you might have heard of that. So let's say someone's coming down, they want to prepay for parking in the Iowa Street ramp. It'll say, well, when do you want to arrive? And I'll say, well, I want to come in after six o'clock because I'm going to a seven o'clock show. I'll enter my license plate in the app. I'll pay for parking. That money goes to the city. Spot Hero takes a, a fee for that transaction. But the city will be able to advertise its parking in, on features like that. Nice. And when I drive up to that garage, it'll just raise the gate because it knows I've already paid. And if it's after 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. it knows it'll let me in. So some really cool customer service features uh, in that regard as well. Thank you. Very informative. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we're at the end of our time here. But... Um Kevin, you had, you had a classic quote there. I don't even know if you caught yourself saying it. A system that works will be a big change. <laughs> I mean, that, is, that is a great quote. But it, but it absolutely speaks to what we're doing here. You know, this is one of those areas where, um, you know, we've tried, to, we've tried to use duct tape as long as we can. And um, good for us for trying to be, if, you know, good with our, with our money and, and be able to save. Um, but if you go to any other modern city our size, you see these features that you've just described here. I think we're going to get used to them really fast. It's going to be a change. It's definitely going to be different for us. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to learn. We're going to have to learn how to do this as a community. But I think, uh, I, I'm, I guarantee we have that ability um, because we've seen lots of other places do it. And they do it really well. And it is so much easier as a user of the system. It is so much easier when you go to events. It is so much easier to visit businesses downtown, to live downtown, um, to be just a part of the community in this way. I, I'm really excited that we're, we're moving in this direction. It's been a long time coming, and I'm glad to see that we're, we're doing it so well. Um, I think the theme that I hope everybody can stick with tonight is this idea that this is all data-driven. We're going to use the information to be able to make decisions, which we can't even do right now efficiently. I mean, we essentially have to hire somebody to drive through parking ramps to figure out what the parking is, how it's being utilized. Thankfully, we are not going to have to do that anymore, and we can move things in real time. And I'm, I'm just incredibly excited to see it. So thank you very much for your work on it. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for all the direction you've provided so far. Looking forward to seeing more because, as was brought up by, by several of us here, there's a lot of things that we're going to need to talk about and make some changes to. So we're looking forward to having more of those discussions. Excellent. Thank you all. all right. Appreciate it. Well, no further business in this work session, so we will be adjourned until 630.